out to Tom James. Good job! Oh, what a goal! What a goal for Tom James! Oh, that was special! Well, good afternoon and welcome to Orient Live for today's Easter Monday fixture against Peterborough and the O's are hoping to roll the stone away from the tomb and step out in E10 and get back to winning ways. Uh, and of course, young Hector Cipriani returns uh, to E10 for the first time since joining uh, Peterborough. And I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Glenn Wilkie and Andrew Butler. Uh, and of course, don't forget, today's game is indeed available to stream in the UK and internationally, so you can pick up streaming parts to watch along uh, from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you join us for this one, because it's set to be a good one. You should hope so. I hope so. Um, I think, let's be clear, there's not a great deal riding on this game. I think particularly for, for both teams, Peterborough look pretty much set that they'll be in the playoffs. Um, come the end of the season and, and I think after that game against uh, Lincoln on Friday our playoff hopes are probably a, uh, more dashed than ever I think it's fair to say however I mean whilst I, whilst I say there's nothing riding on it you just you have to keep winning the games just to keep yourself in the conversation so that's what we'll be looking to do this afternoon and, uh, and hopefully we do get all three points Goals have been a little bit dry of late and it has obviously meant that the form hasn't been great either. In the last five games, one goal came in that one win against Stevenage, and the rest we've, we've blanked. So it would be good to get back to scoring ways. And as Andrew says, you know, it's not over till it's over. And if we go on and win our next five, who, who says it can't happen? Six games will be better if we won those. <laughs> <laughs> five after today. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, it's, it, we've said it time and time again scoring a goal is the hardest thing in football. And we go through patches. We did it earlier in the season where we went through a patch where we didn't score for a number of games. And the key thing is creating chances. And uh, as we saw at Lincoln, there, there was chances created. Not glorious open goals, but we had chances. And we have had chances in previous games. We've just not been taking them. And I don't feel the, the forward players or the, the players in the position to, to get their shot off early want to... Or they're not... Not they don't want to score. They want to score, but they're not been sort of taking them early sort of chances that they, they, they want to keep the ball and play the ball a bit more safer and try and create a, a more of a goal scoring opportunity but sometimes you just got to shoot it hit a leg deflection whatever it is start shooting and I, I, I think we we are creating we can score goals but it's going to be very difficult today because Peter, Peterborough are a very good side and unlike what Andrew says there's not much riding on it I think there's a there's a different side of that story. Well, Peterborough not in fantastic form themselves, having lost the last couple of games. Uh, but it is a young, uh, fairly attacking lineup that Richie's gone for today. And we're going to look at the teams very shortly, but first, let's hear from the main man himself, it's Richie Williams. Gaffer, Peterborough to come this afternoon. It's been a lovely sunny morning. Hopefully, it stays that way. How much are we looking forward to it? Can't wait. Good test against one of the best teams in the league, especially the, the front three, four players. Um, quick, sharp. They've got exceptional ability in 1v1 situations that can change the game. It's a really, really tough game for us. Where where do we need to be good to hurt them? Well, I think it's been the story of our season. We haven't scored enough goals. We've scored one in four in a, in a time where we need to score goals. Um, so I think in terms of, of, lot of a lot of general play, a lot of tactically we're very, very good, but we just lack things in the... In the, uh, the final third, so I think we're going to need to we we'll need to score against these because these are a really good team. Uh, they've got goals from different areas of the pitch. Um, so for me, on turnover, we need to hurt them in the spaces where they leave because they are expansive. And um, and when we get in around their box, we're going to need to be, need to be um, pretty clinical. On the flip side, they're top scorers in the division. I think. How do we go about stopping them? Well, you have to protect the spaces. You have to make sure that you don't go chasing when they when they're rolling especially the wingers the, roll, the wingers like rolling inside and, and if you get that that uh, press wrong it can cause you a lot of problems it can open gaps or it can leave the man on the ball space to turn and run like I said they have, they have brilliant players that you know, I think Mason Clark got a, a move to the championship for 3 million and they've loaned him back so that shows you the type of player he is 
some things you can't coach is 1v1 moments. We had it last year with Paul Smith. When Paul Smith can go pe past people and change the dynamic of the game, and they've probably got three or four players that can do that. Well, it is set to be an exciting game, and there's been a handful of changes for the O's, some uh, through forced, uh, and of course, uh, what with Friday's game. Just some tired legs as well, but let's take a look and see how the O's are lining up. Starting in goal, of course, uh, is our number one. It's Solbrin across the back line today. In the fullbacks, we have Tom Jones uh, on the right side and Jaden Sweeney in at left back. And then we're in the armband today is Omar Beckles. And partnering him in central defence is Brandon Cooper. In the midfield, we have Jordan Brown and Ethan Galbraith coming in uh, as Dan Pratley and Idris Mazzuni both drop out of the squad completely. Uh, George Wonker occupies that number 10 role and then our three young attackers it's Shackford, Dan Adu, Ajay and Oli O'Neill and on the bench for Leighton Orient is Sam Howes, Dan Adji also returns Joe Piggott, Royal Satiriu, Max Sanders, Rob Hunt and Kayon Edwards. So it's it's an interesting one because it is very young and let's, let's start with what we've spoken about the need for goals. That's a very young uh, dynamic forward for we've got going on there. It is, I like it. I like it. The, the, the only one out in that starting lineup is uh, Adu Adji, who, yes, he's the, he's the younger one out of them, but you look at the, the three behind with O'Neill, Monker, and Ford, they've, all, all them three players have had a good sort of season. Monker coming into it after Christmas, his form improved. O'Neill's been superb. Um, and, and Ford as well with his, his goal tally this year, he's, he's got better and better. Yes, they're young, but the, the amount of games and minutes they've played throughout this season would say they're not as inexperienced as Adu Adji. So, It'll be interesting to see. There's, there's, I can certainly see a lot of pace there, a lot of energy with that, that front four. And if we can get Moncur the ball f on the half turn facing forward, he'll slip balls in because he'll be running off the ball. So I, I think it's quite an exciting front four. And Dan Adu, which I lead in the line, we imagine. Uh, what, what, what does that tell you that Richie's planning here? I mean, that's a really, really good question because it's still... You know, he's still a fairly unknown quantity, especially to try and do 90 minutes. I totally agree with what Glenn was saying about the, the number of minutes that players like Shaq Ford's had um, so far this season. Because, I mean, you know, when he came to the club, for example, Ford, I don't think you'd be expecting him to be playing 38 games um, so far this season because we had Jordan Graham, because we had Theo Archibald, etc. So he's done a lot, of, he's, he's put in a lot of work so far this season. Then Adu Ajay has only got seven games under his belt since arriving to the club at um, in January, but he's also incredibly young, only 18 years old, on loan from Bournemouth, still a bit of an unknown quantity. It's a really, I think, an interesting move, um, considering the likes of Satiria Pigger on the bench as well. Um, it's probably just that kind of element of, you know, it's getting to the end of the season, let's just see what it's about. Let's give him a bit of responsibility mm -hmm. and give him some, some good game time and, and just see if he can impress. Um, so it's, it, I'm unsure, uh, obviously, at the moment, but we'll see how the game develops because in the moments that we've seen from him, he's obviously looked bright, lively, everything you expect from a young player to, to, to you know, get around the pitch a little bit more. To, he gets you know, barged off the pitch by, by, by the bigger lads on, on, on the pitch um, in the opposition. Of course, that's going to happen, but if he can you know, just get, you know, get a few minutes of some early touches under his belt uh, and go from there it will give him a hell of a lot of confidence and uh, and I, I quite like the idea of trying something new at this stage of the season. Oh, sorry, I was just going to interject as well, but what's interesting for me is Darren Ferguson, the Peterborough manager, will be looking at our lineup, last game, whatever, planning what we're going to set up as. I don't think he would have had Adu Ajay in the starting lineup. So it's a bit of a curveball as well. He, he seems to team sheet at two o'clock like the rest of us. We didn't plan for that. Mm. What's going to happen? And they'll, their researchers will be having a look at stats and what, what's his boy like? What's his dangers? What's, where can we sort of show him out wide? What can we do? So it sort of messes with their brain as well and the way they set up, which is, I think, it's a really good thing. And he's young. He's 18. Uh, as, as we've said, most of his minutes have come from the bench. He probably hasn't had a chance to really get going too much. Mm. But today's a good opportunity. But it's... it's Yes, it's a curveball, but it's a tough opposition to, to throw him up against. Really tough opposition, but it's sink or swim, isn't it? You, you get your opportunity. There's four other strikers with more minutes than him on the bench, or is it five? There's, there's players on the bench, and he, it'll give him a boost that he's got to start in, in the starting lineup and he's got a starting shirt ahead of those players. 
it's now let's see what the character of the boy is let's see at whether like we say sink or swim what's his attitude like on the pitch yes it's going to be tough for him but let's have a look at his body language his work rate what's he going to show us because he not only is he showing us the supporters the manager and his teammates he's on loan so his home his home team will be looking to see how he's done on loan so he's he's obviously wants to show everyone what he can do playing first team football We've had a torrid time with injuries, but one player who's come back, uh, he, I think he had a little knock before the international break, but Ollie O'Neill, um, and, and obviously a January signing, he's, he's crucial to, to this attacking lineup. We've seen how good he is in, in this second half of the season, and uh, if we'd have lost him as well, that would have left us without a winger, but thankfully he's back in the lineup and he'll be, uh, he'll be crucial. Yeah, massively so. He came on, um, obviously, against Lincoln on, on Friday. He looked bright, he had that header that just went over, um, which would have been a fantastic goal. Um, so it was a shame to, to see him not on the, on the um, score sheet for that. He's got a tough job um, up against Peterborough in terms of a little bit of defensive work as well. Of course, playing a 4 2 3 1, you expect Brown, Galbraith to be filling in for, for the likes of Sweeney um, when, when he goes up the top. But someone like Katongo. For uh, for Peterborough, their right back will be will be keeping O'Neill honest and making sure that he he's getting back a bit. So, uh, an interesting clash down there on the left hand side, and also just quite interesting from from the fact that Jaden Sweeney's going to be playing as well because I think they played together only a couple of times and and it looked okay. I, I think it might have been against Port Vale, but I need to check. And and that's you know, giving Sweeney the start as well is also you know, a fairly big call. And how can they interact? How can they work down that left hand side together? Um, and hopefully it will be effective. We'll come on to the defensive side uh, of things shortly, but let's keep talking about goals. And whilst Peterborough are a very good side, they're in the top six, of course, but we've had Joy scoring against the top six sides this season. We'll see from, from some clips now. It's, they've been the ones that we've, uh, we've, we've normally managed to score in. Yeah, and it's, it seems to, uh, to, to everyone, when we play teams in the top six, the ones who are going for a promotion... They're the teams where people think we, we don't have much chance or much chance of success. We've done really well against them. You know, it's because they, they're they open in their play and they, and they attack us. They don't sit behind the ball like a lot of the teams when we play at home. Some of the teams who, who are down near the bottom just want, they know we're a good side. We, we keep the ball well, possession stats are high. They sit behind the ball and say, come and break us down. We, we have struggled against teams like that. When the game's more open against these teams, sort of top six, top eight teams, it suits our game better because we are very good on the break, and especially when we've got the pace and the, the youthfulness in, in them wide areas and the front, front three areas. We'll see it here. We've, we've got the pace and, and we can nick the ball and, and get opportunities. I, I think today's going to be a really, really good encounter and I think it's going to be end-to-end, -end, a bit like a basketball game. Um, and it, it, it hopefully will just provide goals though because we, we can't keep on not scoring otherwise the, the season really will peter out yeah massively so and you know, we, we 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 have to be very very aware of peterborough's um threat top scorers in in league one with 75 goals they've got and they've got goals honestly everywhere on the pitch every single player who's um started for them this afternoon is apart from the keeper has scored um a goal for for them this so far this season which suggests that their attacking threat is is, is fairly decent um, and I'd, I'd just kind of like to see us at this stage of the season just kind of be a bit braver, be a bit bolder. Against Lincoln, it felt like, it felt like a game where, especially in the first half, it was both teams not wanting to concede rather than both teams wanting to score a goal. And whilst we were the better team and we were much brighter than Lincoln, obviously we didn't get the goal we came very close so Neil went close Galbraith had a, a had a very close effort as well from from range and we still managed to lose that game and I, I i just want to see us kind of go from for the next six games of the rest of the season just just showing that we have got attacking intent um you know, we i know we kind of always joke about how few goals we, we do score from from time to time but we've shown so far like at points this season that we've got goals in us um that magnificent game against northampton we won 4-3 obviously we concede three goals in that game but still managed to win so we can do it i think we just need to be a bit braver and this is of course a peter who conceded three at home to rock bottom carlisle so you know that they're, they're, they're a defense that are there for the taking and maybe even a an eye on their cup final on sunday as well so you know 
that they they could be there for the taking today. Yeah, look at their last two games. They lose against Portsmouth, top of the league, and then they lose the next game against Carlisle, bottom of the league. So, um, having looked at the goals that they conceded on Friday, their defence was at sixes and sevens. It was crosses coming into the box. It was communication. It just seemed very, very unprofessional from them, from a team who are solid normally and they're in the playoff positions. And like you say, they're in a cup final on Sunday. You'd think it would be a lot better than what it has been. But they maybe it was just a one-off game. Hopefully it wasn't and they, and they defend the same way today. But me and Andrew was having a chat before the game and, and he said that today, I, I think it's going to be a really, really difficult game today. I think Peterborough, off the, off the back of two losses, will come here with a point to prove ahead of the cup final and there'll be players playing for their place on the weekend. Whereas Andrew thinks <laughs> differently, don't you, Andrew? Yeah, you I think do, they yeah. might take their foot off the gas a bit and no one, nobody wants to get injuries, which I understand. But I, I think with the two losses, I think that changes things up. And of course, we can't talk about Peterborough coming and playing in E10 without tonight. One of the greatest nights under the lights here. Uh, at uh, in E10, this game, uh, I know you weren't here, Andrew. You missed this one, but just rewatching it and, and the clips is so you just can't not talk about it. It's one of the, the, the best games in recent history. Yeah, completely. I mean, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, it wasn't here for it. Um, watched it on TV, um, which I know is just not the same. Just not the same. You were here, Ollie, though, weren't you? I was. Yeah. The night before I think my first we're, we're GCSE gonna, exam. Well, yeah, how did that first GCSE go, <laughs> go for you? I think I passed it. <laughs> okay, a pass is a pass. That's fine. Um, but it was a, a, obviously an amazing, um, amazing night for the club. Um, these are the sort of nights that you kind of that, that that you live for. Of course, you want to go up automatically. But there is something special about playoffs and, and getting through uh, in the playoffs. That amazing goal from Dean Cox. Um, with the second bite of the cherry, you're in this, aren't you? Ollie? I'm just behind the goal there. If you were, if you were yes. to pause it and slow it down, that's yeah. where the book's revising. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was the night before my Spanish exam, actually, so I was uh, cheering in Spanish the whole night. Um, but it, 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 it's obviously a lot of time has passed. A lot has happened at both clubs since then. Well, Peter was still have the same manager, but he's come and gone <laughs> about ten times. Um, but you know, it 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 does. Uh, it, it still lives in the memory and, and kind of probably not for the players but for the fans you feel like you know Peter we're coming here we've, we've done it before we'll, we'll, we'll win it again definitely definitely they're, they're, listen they're, they're, you say that about a manager being there possibly 10 times <laughs> it's not far off that but they've been a bit of a yo-yo club in recent history going up to the championship they've seen what it's like to be up there they've got a very very good chairman um, they've got a great business model where they, they recruit good players in and sell them for a massive profit as well so that's quite sustainable makes the club more sustainable they're a good side they're a good side and we knew at the beginning of the season that they're going to be in and around the playoff sort of Mac promotion and, and they are and they're in the cup final as well so looking back to today forget the, the history looking at today I just think it's going to be a massive task for us but I think we can score goals and we need to score goals because they always seem to score people are always their, their goals always seem to score a goal they certainly do and let's just very quickly we're, we're running out of time slightly but let's just touch on kind of the defence midfield areas no Prattley Idris Mazzini out for the rest of the season which is a massive blow it's a young midfield partnership of, of Jordan Brown and Ethan Galraith but uh, a dynamic one it's a huge I mean there's a this afternoon is going to be is, is a big big test for, for such young players because of course, we've, we've already spoken about the fact that we've got Sh uh, Shaq Ford, Adu Ajayi, O'Neill, all under 21s, Galbraith, Brown, both very young players as well. Of the, of the front six, uh, it's only really Monker who's kind of a, an experienced pro. And when we played against Bolton just before Christmas, that was kind of the, the thing that, that undid for us. That we're, we've, we've, we're often seeing someone like Prattley. Um, in there in, in a game like like this I suppose and and it kind of we, we came undone very early in that game we came back in the second half really really well so it's a huge test um, against the Peterborough side that, that like we've been saying all afternoon have goals throughout their, their entire team um, and and kind of act as a really really cohesive unit you look at their back line three of them have played um, over 45 games um, this season 
So, and obviously they've, they've done well in, in cups and, and that football league trophy as well. So they've been playing more games than we have, but there's a there's a real cohesiveness with their team that, that will be really, really tough to break down, I think, this afternoon. It certainly will. Now it's time uh, to remind you all of a very special deal we've got going on at the moment. And of course, don't forget, uh, the clocks went forward. Forward? Yeah, yep, forward. they went forward. That's an extra <laughs> hour of sunshine in the day. And that means uh, you need to get yourself down to the club shop and get 30% uh, off of all products on offer here you can get some uh, training gear or a replica shirt get yourself out in the sunshine get those arms out get some vitamin D and uh, get on a run or two uh, so just head over to the club uh, website or down to the superstore to take advantage of those deals right then also last week it was World Water Day and water is very important in all areas of life not just football so some of our lads went down to Henry Maynard School uh, and spoke to them about the importance of hydration so today we just went through um, World Water Day. Um, it was me, Mikey, the head of physio for the academy, and Uko, just talking to the kids about how important it is to keep hydrated um, and how much water we take daily to keep ourselves healthy. I think it's just general health and general well-being. I think without water, it's very difficult to live a life that you'd want to live. I'd say water is very important as we're made of 60% of it. So yeah, it's very important. I'd just say always work as hard as you can. Um, give everything to your best ability. And yeah, just work hard. My, my role is the lead academy physio. I support the, the players, um, obviously with the injured players, helping them get back um, fit as soon as possible. Um, and obviously with all the fit players, making sure that they're doing everything they can to, to prevent any future injuries happening. Um, so obviously within that is looking at monitoring their playing loads, um, monitoring their nutrition, make sure they're doing all the right things, um, any exercises they need to do preemptively to, to keep their bodies fresh and, um, and robust. So we uh, help support them on that um, and together with the sports science team and the coaches we, we just make sure the players are playing as much as possible. Obviously your, your body's made up of a lot of water, so 60% water which goes into your muscles um, and your tendons and everything so keeping hydrated is going to help you perform um, optimally but also prevent injuries um, so keeping your body in the best shape as possible. Well, that's the message. Make sure you stay hydrated and, of course, stay hydrated for the big match coming up because it is an exciting 90 minutes. And don't forget, uh, there's no blackout, so you can watch it from wherever you are in the world. So if you're on our YouTube stream, just head over to the Match Centre uh, on the club website that's on screen now to pick up your streaming pass to watch along. And it's just under 10 minutes until kickoff, so make sure you don't miss out. And we need to wrestle through the away side now and, and take a look at how Posh are lining up for this afternoon's fixture. In goal, we have Jed Steer, we have Jadel Kotongo, the captain is Harrison Burrows, Ronnie Edwards, Josh Knight, Efren Mason Clark, Kwame Poku, David Ajaboye, Ricky J. Jones, uh, former Orient Academy graduate, is Hector Kipriano, and finally Archie Collins. And on the bench for Peter is Nicholas Bilokopic, Romani Critchlow, Ryan de Havilland, Johnson Clark Harris, Joel Randall, Michael Olakibe, and Malik Mothersill. So, uh, we, we, we've touched on it briefly, but you know, let's just take a look at some of the, the goals Mason uh, Clark has scored. He's been loaned back from uh, the Championships country, I believe. Um, but, but he's an exciting player. 30 goal involvements this, this season, Andrew. Yeah, and uh, Richie mentioned him in his interview earlier. He's a, uh, on paper, he's a £3 million player and he's been loaned back to, back to the club. And uh, yeah, 18 goals, 12 assists. Um, he's had a fantastic season and, and we're seeing some of, kind of his, his goals um, up until this point really need to keep him quiet but then alongside that Kwame Poku got nine, uh, 12 goals 9 assists um, Ricky J Jones 11 goals 5 assists it just kind of goes to show that across the pitch Peterborough are, are such a such an attacking force and, but Mason Clark is that standout player 30 goal involvements in 47 games he kind of is exactly the sort of return you want for a player who 
you've managed to sell for three million quid, get back uh, on loan as well. Um, so yeah, we need to, to make sure um, to keep an eye out for him. Um, he kind of comes in field, usually plays out on the, the left hand side of a very attacking um, front four, and uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be a real threat for them going going forward. Do you think Jaden Sweeney's been brought in maybe with a little bit more pace than than you like to Rob Hunt to try and contain that? He's very good defensively one on one. Uh, is Jaden? So may, is that maybe a, a move there to try and tactically? Keep him out of the game? Possibly, yeah. They're a, they're a very dynamic side. And, and like Andrew says, going forward, they've got goals <clears throat> across the pitch. Now, if we, we've got these youngsters in, and we say Jaden Sweeney, he's not a youngster, but he's, he's not played too many times this season. He's got that pace. He's got that bit of experience from playing last season. He'll know what to do. He'll just He adds something different to, to what Rob Hunt would. So I think it's a, I think it's a good move. Fingers crossed Jaden plays well today and starts well because he's a really big confidence player. When it's not going well for him to start, he sort of red goes a bit. Um, if he starts well, I think he'll have a super game. He certainly will. And, uh, you know, top scorers in the league. We spoke about Mason Club, but 75 goals. They're, they're, they're leading the way, our, our Peterborough. Um, it's going to be a tough afternoon for Jaden. It's going to be a tough afternoon for the for the whole defence. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because it's not just it's not just the fact that their attacking players um, are getting getting in amongst the goals as well. We need to look out for players like their captain Harrison Burrows, a left back who's got nine goals and fourteen assists to his name so far this season. These are numbers that that kind of you don't really get elsewhere um, in, in the division. I'm sure there'll be players that if Peter don't go up through the playoffs this season, they'll be coming um, and being picked off. But like Glenn said, that's kind of their, their entire um, business model. But I'm, com- I'm, 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 I'm reasonably confident about this, uh, this afternoon because as Glenn alluded to, there's, you know, they've got, I think they've got more than half an hour on the, the Football League trophy final on Sunday. You don't really want to be rushing into many tackles. You want to be keeping fresh. It's obviously only in six days' time. And they've had this blip in form. Peterborough have, are incredibly streaky. So prior to their two losses um, of the last couple of weeks, they, they won their previous five. But then before that, they had four losses in a row as well. They, they don't really draw many games. They, they either go for it or they lose. And so maybe they're in just that blip where they, they're, they're falling off a little bit. But for those reasons, I, I think... You know, there, there is reasons to be confident this afternoon. Well, if we're talking about being streaky, then they'll be looking at the last couple of games and they'll be wanting to put things right. You don't want to be heading into a potential, you know, playoff situation out of form. So they'll they'll be trying to turn things around. And I know you disagree with Andrew, maybe thinking they'll take their foot off the gas, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's two two things. Like you say, you want to you want to be in a, a steady, good run of form going into the playoffs, but that's six seven games away, you know. They've got a cup final on Sunday. They don't want to be going into there having lost three games on the bounce because then that affects them as well. So it, it's a balancing act. You don't, as a player, you don't want to get injured. But sometimes if you're not going into tackles fully hearted, you're going to get injured. So it's like, go out there, play the same way. I, I think they'll be strong today, but just looking at our f- forward four again, I think if, if we do the right things, make the quick early decisions, I, I think we'll score goals today. Omar Beckles getting ready to lead the boys out here at the Gotham Group Stadium. Um, it's going to need a big performance from him today wearing that armband, as we've touched on. It's a young side. He's going to need to be that experience out on the pitch, isn't he? Yeah, massively. Big game for him. I think also a big game for, for George uh, Moncur as well, just to add that little bit of experience because mm-hmm. elsewhere, uh, you look around, there's, there's, there's not a great deal out of it on the pitch. So, yeah, big game for Omar. Hopefully he can lead from the back. Well, the players are making their way out onto the pitch now here in E10. So let's hand over to our very capable hands of Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. Good afternoon and welcome to Brisbane Road for what should be a very special Easter Monday fixture. And both Kent Teague and Nigel Travis are here to see this one. Changes for the O's, and of course they knew there'd be one that would be forced upon them because of the knee injury sustained by Idris El Mazzouni at Central Bank on Friday. And he is absent today. But making an appearance, albeit on the substitutes bench, is Dan Ajay. And that really is good news, isn't it, Matt? (laughs) 
Well, we were just organising our microphones here. I think it's uh, a little complicated because we're delighted to say we've got Harry Goodchild is uh, with us and Harry is all part of the junior takeover that's uh, taking place this afternoon. And uh, I think now everybody can hear you, Matt. Is that right? Uh, hear you loud and clear, Dave, whether you can hear me or not. I'm hoping you can. We say five changes for the O's today. Sweeney, Galbraith, O'Neill, Monker, Adu Ajay makes his full senior debut. And uh, I say a, a very tough challenge from Peterborough awaits. The team that has scored the most goals in the division, 75 already this campaign. They've got threats all over the pitch. Mason Clark, Poku Jones, Clark Harris on the bench, Randall as well. There's an abundance attack in there. It's 30 goals more than Oint has scored this season. Quite incredible, but Ignoint Oint have conceded two fewer. Yeah, and I think you expect with Richie Wellens, even in the title-winning season, the O's very hard to break down. Doesn't matter how much attacking intent you've got. And we saw that in the game at London Road. A good one-all scoreline on that afternoon. But I think this afternoon with the O's, five changes, it can make life a little bit difficult. So we'll see how the players engage from the moment the whistle goes and how they can try and take the game to the visitors. It is junior takeover.